So I want to explain something to you that I hope will really help you shift your understanding about pain. And as we shift from that Cartesian pain model to our updated new pain science model, what we need to understand is that there are actually no pain receptors in your body. That's right. There is not a single actual pain receptor in your body. What there are are these nerve endings called nociceptors. And what they detect is that they detect danger. And all that they do is that if they detect danger, they send a signal to your spinal cord. And then at your spinal cord, what happens is that the spinal cord decides whether this is a serious message or it's not so serious. And if it thinks that it's a serious message, it sends the signal of nociception up to your brain. And from there, your brain decides what you're going to experience, whether you experience pain or no pain. And there's a lot of different mechanisms that are happening here, but the thing that I want you to understand is that there are really not any actual pain receptors. There's only danger receptors. And all that they do is send information up to the brain, and then the brain is going to decide what you're experiencing. So the brain processes and then creates pain. So what can happen is that if a person has had some kind of a traumatic experience, let's say uh, they were going for a walk in the woods and they got bit by a snake. That was a very traumatic experience. Oh my gosh, am I going to die? Or what's going to go on with this situation? So let's say the person got to the hospital. Everything's fine. They've healed from that snake bite. What happens going forward is that you're out on your hike again. It could be a year, it could be 10 years later, it could be 20 years later. Something brushes your leg and your brain immediately says, oh my gosh, this is the same situation that happened last time and I'm going to shoot excruciating pain down into the leg to let you know that your life might be on the line. And it could have just been a leaf or a stick brushing up against your leg. But because of that, that process of how the brain works is that it goes into panic mode. And now you're experiencing excruciating pain when a leaf just brushed up against your leg. Now, this isn't true all of the time. But what they're finding is that this is a very common experience that people are having when it comes to pain. So we have so many different sensory receptors in our body at any given time that are constantly receiving information over and over and over. We have temperature re receptors. We have stress receptors. We have movement receptors, uh, receptors that actually gauge our immunity function. We have receptors that gauge blood flow. And what can happen when a person is experiencing chronic pain is that if there's an area that says, oh, hey, I'm not getting enough blood flow, instead of just asking uh, the body to say, send more blood flow, it actually can activate pain, the, the pain neural matrix in your brain. And now you're going into chronic pain, not because that there's actually any tissue damage, all because the brain panicked and it decided to say that was what was going on. The same thing with, with stress or movement. Maybe you move your body in a, in a way at which there's no tissue damage that's happening, but all of a sudden your shoulder or your neck lock up because the brain panicked and it's stuck in this neurofeedback loop of overreacting when something happens to it. So we call this, these are increased resting levels. So how we're going to explain this is the nerves essentially just get over excited. So if we have a scale of 1 to 10, and let's say your resting level on the normal activation for a nerve is a level 8, what happens is that when you're experiencing chronic pain, instead of that number being at a number 8, it actually lowers those resting levels to where now you only need to get to a level 5 before those nerves are activated. So now you have so much less ability to be able to function because now instead of taking until an 8 to activate that particular nerve sensor, now the nerves are oversensitized and boom, your body over responds to things that are really not that big of a deal. And they facilitate chain reactions. So you can have, uh, well, this is one of my favorite ways to explain this, is that you essentially have all of these receptors all over your body. And what should happen if one of the receptors is stimulated, that receptor should be able to do its job and process the information. 
but how the nervous system works because the nervous system is completely connected. If one of these receptors and one of these ping pong balls on these mouse traps go off, then it starts activating uh, other mouse traps and receptors all over the room. And the next thing you know, your brain is being flooded by all of these different nerve receptors and there's no tissue trauma happening, but your brain is just being overstimulated. And so the brain says pain, 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 pain. So how I like to explain this is uh, it's the difference between being able to talk in a library versus being out at the park. So we've all been there where we've been at the library and it's all quiet and everybody's talking and whispering and actually most people are not talking. So that librarian comes around the corner and says, hey, what are you doing? I'm going to focus on you and give you extra attention because you're talking louder than what you should. And you're not even really talking loud, you're still just whispering. So you can't really communicate the way that you want to because you're in this environment that you're being scrutinized at such a high level. Now, if we're out at a playground, people can yell and scream and, and sing and dance and do all these other things, and nobody pays attention. You get to go about your business, you get to do your things, and you're in a state where the nervous system isn't oversensitized. So it's really important to understand that with chronic pain, so much of the time it could just be an oversensitization within your unique neural matrix and it's not any actual issues within your brain. The next piece that happened to the nerves is that when I have a consistent signal that's happening and I'm sending a similar message over and over and over, it increases the, f the rate at which it can send that signal. So when a person is experiencing chronic pain, what happens is that when those same receptors are firing over and over, it actually increases the size of that neural pathway. It lays down more myelin around that nerve track itself, which is what allows the speed and the amplification of the nervous system to send the message. And now it's sending more signal and it's sending it even faster. And ultimately, you have less room to play and work. So when those resting levels are activated, that's the difference between if you have to work in a tiny little cubicle, and every time you move an arm, you bump into the wall, or you bump your knee against the desk, you just don't have any room to be able to do your job. Or if you had that really nice, spacious uh, corner office that gets to overlook the ocean, and you have all the room that you need to get up and walk around, maybe get on your foam roller and uh, do some self-care, you can take a moment and relax and look out over the scenery. These two experiences are so different from each other that this is a very stress-induced environment because not only do you not have any room to be able to do your job, but you have your boss looking over your shoulder the whole time. And that's exactly what starts happening within your nervous system is that these nerves just go crazy. And so again, you could be experiencing pain even though that there's nothing wrong with your system. So how pain changes your brain and the nervous system is that it literally changes the way that your body is, is, is being created. The shape of your brain, the amount of white matter and gray matter actually change in its size and intensity because the brain is changing the way that the neural pathways are, are moving and functioning. And again, it gets overstimulated. It gets overexcited. 